Lavrov says that all parties should support Al Ibrahimi's mission to find a political solution to the crisis in Syria. And Al Ibrahimi says the political solution is the only choice left for solving the crisis in Syria, according to Geneva statement. Massive demonstrations take to the streets of, of Al Qatif protesting oppressive practices of Al Saud against citizens. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that Russia was contacting with all parties in Syria to solve the crisis in it, referring that the terrorist acts are increasing in Syria, including what Al-Qaeda is doing. In a joint press conference with the UN envoy to Syria, Lakhdar Ibrahimi, in Moscow, Lavrov added that Russia's priority is halting violence in Syria and starting a political process, according to Geneva statement. The Russian minister stressed that all parties should support Ibrahimi's mission, pointing out that there is still an opportunity for finding a solution to the crisis in Syria, as reaching a real political process is the best solution to find a way out of the crisis. Ibrahimi, for his part, said that nothing is left for us but the political solution being a choice for solving the crisis in Syria according to Geneva statement and everyone should help the Syrians to overcome the crisis and halt violence. In related context, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bogdanov stressed that all the debates that Russia is conducting regarding the crisis in Syria are based on Geneva statement, asserting that Syrians are the only ones who determine the future of their country. In an interview with Russia Today TV channel, Bogdanov said that Russian officials discussed with their partners different ideas to solve the crisis in Syria and all of them are on the basis of Geneva statement. He dismissed as untrue the existence of any U.S.-Russian plan conveyed by the U.N. envoy to Syria, al akhdar al-Ibrahimi. New evidence is revealed that shows that armed groups are using children in terrorist acts through sending them to expel themselves and making them carry out surveillance activities. More in the following. By committing such heinous crimes, Al Nusra Front wants to kill Syria's children. It is difficult to explain this photo, which was published by the terrorist Al Nusra Front, claiming that it is for the mother of the Mujahideen while trying to prepare an explosive device to be carried by a 10 year old child. The photo was followed by a religious fatwa that provides for sending children to what the terrorist front called struggle. What kind of struggle imposes on children to carry explosive devices to be remotely detonated? This phenomenon is not new, as children have been used by terrorist groups since the beginning of the crisis as human shields. The misleading media channels also played a role in recruiting children. This photo, which shows a woman carrying a bleeding child, was screened by the misleading Al Arabiya channel, claiming that it took place in Dara. But the reality refuted Al Arabiya claims and proved that the photo was published in a newspaper in 2009 and was taken from the archive of the Iraqi resistance. In local news, the Syrian Arab army units continue to crack down on terrorist groups in a number of neighborhoods in the resort city and its countryside. An official source said that a unit of the Syrian Arab Army clashed with a terrorist group in Al Ardi neighborhood in the city, killing a number of its members and injuring others. The source added that the terrorist Ismail Mohammed Al Alush, leader of the so called Al Furqan Brigade, was reportedly killed in the operation. Another unit clashed with a terrorist group and killed most of its members, among them Mohammed Sabbar Khalifa from the so called Ibn Taymiyyah Battalion. In Al Busayla Street, a unit of the Syrian Arab Armed Forces killed several terrorists and injured others. The terrorist Najm Meshwikh was identified among the dead. A unit of the armed forces also targeted and destroyed the camp for Al Qaeda in Al Mayadeen, east of Tayyib Al Fal Akar, with the terrorist inside it, was also destroyed. Another unit destroyed eight cars with all the terrorists inside it near a tank field in Al Mayadeen area. Also in Al Mayadeen, a unit of the Syrian Arab Army clashed with an armed terrorist group, killing and injuring its members. 
In Damascus countryside, a unit of the Syrian Arab army killed a number of terrorists in Daria. A military source said that the clash took place as the terrorists were stealing the contents of public and private properties in the area. The source added that another unit of the Syrian Arab army destroyed terrorist dens between Nebuk and Yabrut, inflicting heavy losses among the terrorists. Units of the Syrian Arab army killed an injured terrorist and destroyed their weapons and equipment in al Husayniyah and Hejira in Damascus countryside. An official source said that cars with terrorist ammunition and machine guns inside were destroyed in Al-Husayniya town, adding that numbers of terrorists were killed and others injured. The source added that a unit of the Syrian Arab army killed members of a, a terrorist group near Al Jazeera pool in Hajira town. Two cars equipped with heavy machine guns were destroyed in the operations. In Duma, a Syrian Arab army unit pursued terrorists near Al Jarra and Al Shuhada roundabouts, injuring a number of them and killing others, including Ahmad Bitar, Muhammad Suleiman, and Saeed Juma. Another unit clashed with terrorist groups in Al Bayadr Square and Al Hassan roundabout in the town of Al Halasta, killing and injuring many terrorists. A Syrian Arab army unit clashed with the terrorist group near the Produce Marketplace in the town of Hajira eliminating a number of terrorists and injuring others. Another unit killed three terrorists in an operation in the town of Adiabia and injured ten others. Terrorists near al Sabit marketplace destroyed two vehicles that were used to transport terrorists, weapons and ammunition. Al Jazeera's correspondent in Berlin, Ekfam Suleiman, resigned from the channel because of what he called its becoming a political and intelligence tool in the hand of Qatar and abandoning professionalism in favor of the Qatari government's agendas. In an interview with Deutsche Villa website, Suleiman said that Al Jazeera currently lacks professionalism contrary to when he joined it in 2002 and that it lacks internal structures that immunize it against attempts by the owners or the editors to interfere politically in things that should have been handled in a journalistic manner. He pointed out that Al Jazeera's coverage of events in Syria fuels the conflict as it makes one side out to be mass murderers and turn the others into saints. The city of Qatif in the eastern Saudi Arabia witnessed a massive peaceful demonstration yesterday, including hundreds of men, women and children protesting against the Saudi forces which opened fire against the people in the market the day before yesterday, killing six people while two others were injured seriously. Al Jazeera mirror site for the first time stated that the demonstrators carried the photo of the dead man Ahmed Muhammad Al Matar, member of the Freedom and Justice Coalition, as they were chanting slogans such as death to Al Saud and other slogans which call upon the international society to interfere in order to deal with the deteriorating human rights situation due to terrorist acts in addition to the propaganda of Al Saud authorities. And with this, we end our news for today. You can get more information from our website, www.syrianonline.sy. Stay with us after the break. Danny has the latest in economy and finance.